Okay, I think, I think we are live. Yes, brilliant. All right, I'm gonna refresh my screen here so I can try and see some of your comments as we're cooking along. But this is Doctor's Kitchen Live, 6 p.m. Monday to Friday, every day in January, Monday to Friday. I'm gonna be doing um, recipes from the book, but also just three to one recipes to teach everyone the formula which is the easiest way to maintain healthy eating in 2021. I'm super excited about uh, tonight. We're um, gonna be doing a prawn bouillon base. I can see myself here, which is great, which means I can be able to, I can see your, your comments and stuff because I can't see that far in front of me. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna be doing um, a whole bunch of recipes. Tonight is gonna be the prawn bouillon base and uh, it's from the three to one book. But regardless of whether you've got the book or not, it doesn't matter. I just want to teach you the formula, which is three portions of fruit and vegetables, nuts or seeds per person, two servings per recipe, or using one pan. That is the easiest way to look after your health. We're going to get the pan ready whilst we're going to start chopping. I'm going to do a quick whiz around the ingredients. But first, you need to make sure you've got some boiling water uh, ready for this recipe. And if you're cooking along, let me know where you're cooking from as well. I'd love to know. All right, so uh, we are going to be starting off with the white onion some uh, some leek and some fennel we're just going to try and chop it up as fine as we can it doesn't need to be exact or chefy it doesn't need to be you know any any particular sort of uh, shape but as fine as you can is probably better for this in this pan we're going to add some extra virgin olive oil pop in the fennel the leek the onion i've got here we've got some tomatoes any tomatoes will do baby tomatoes regular sized tomatoes totally fine uh, we've got a veg stock, two, uh, uh, two cloves of garlic that we can either grate or finely chop, paprika, pepper, chili flakes, salt, uh, veg stock I've already said, thyme, some baby thyme here, so we've got some bay leaves, some parsley to finish and some lemon to finish and we're using prawns but if you want to do it plant based, complete plant based, totally up to you, uh, all you need to do is add some white beans and it's actually a lot quicker that way as well. So if you are cooking along, let me know. I've definitely bounced back from COVID. Thanks, Miranda. Uh, as you can tell, um, it's been about 11, 12 days now. So I'm feeling a lot better. The healthy diet's probably helped uh, along. And certainly with my diet, which is uh, a lot of plants and lots of fiber, there may be uh, something in that as well. But I'm gonna focus on the ingredients. So I'm starting off with leek. Um, I'm using quite a few leeks because I've got some leeks to get rid of. So I'm going to throw everything in. I'm probably using a bit more than I should be, but that's fine. These these recipes are pretty pretty rough and ready and versatile. You can you can use they're, they're quite flexible in terms of the um, the amount, so you don't need to be exact with everything. So load of leek over here that I've already washed. Uh, I'm going to use 100 grams of white onion. You can use red as well if you want. And for this, you want to slice down. The, um, the tracks of the onion. So a lot, So this is the roots, you wanna, you wanna slice along the different lines here, and then you wanna cut into it, like I'll show you in a second. Cut into it using the knife, just be careful of your fingers, and this is where a sharp knife is much better than having a blunt knife. And then, using the claw technique always, crop, cut across, and you've got a nice fine dice here, that's gonna go lovely. And think about the ingredients that I'm using tonight. I've got leeks, I've got onion, I've got fennel, I've got loads of prebiotic fibers there. They are fantastic for health. And this is key to eating for, to support your immune system, to support inflammation, to uh, balance sugar levels. Uh, this is exactly the way you want to be eating with plenty of fibers. So pop that in, I'm gonna leave the root out. Same thing again with the white onions. And we need to get this going because I've only got half an hour to cook and this should take exactly half an hour. Cut that in. And we wanna get this caramelized as soon as possible. So low to medium heat, so this a little bit up. And uh, try and take that, yeah, crowd them back to full strength. I wouldn't say I'm full strength at the moment, but I would say 90% there. I'm feeling a lot better. And you know what, the best thing I've done beyond uh, obviously maintaining my diet is, um, is just giving myself a chance to rest and sleep. Uh, and we know there is a, a ton of evidence, 
evidence to suggest that one of the best immune supporting activities that you can do is improving your sleep level. So yeah, I highly, highly recommend if you are ill not to push through, which is kind of what I was trying to do last week, I guess, uh, but to actually allow yourself the opportunity to rest. Uh, we know that um, natural killer cells and other uh, cells of your innate immune system, so that's your first line defense uh, immune system, those are definitely supported with a well-rested uh, body. So definitely something I would recommend. So these are gonna sweat down for about 10 minutes. We want the, um, the caramelization, the sugars to come out of them and help sweeten the dish. And this uh, beautiful base is going to be perfect for our prawns and our bouillie base. And I, you know, this kind of dish is something that you could do with different types of fish. You know, if you've got chunky white cod or pollock or whatever sustainable in your area, um, there's a lot of people that will hear from different parts of the world, like South Africa and France. So whatever you can find in terms of fish will tend to work with this dish as well. So I'm just using half a medium sized um, bowl here. Again, same sort of technique, cut across along the, um, the lines of the, of the uh, fennel, and then we're gonna cut in and then cut across. So we've got a rough dice, probably about half a centimeter or so. I'm gonna use everything apart from the roots. And so with minimal waste, and all that goes in. And then, you know, if, you, if it's not as fun as you like, you can just do exactly what I'm doing, which is use the flat, of the knife, your, uh, the flat of your hand across the knife here and just cut across. And then in this goes. And that way you've got 10 minutes now to focus on the rest of your ingredients. The other way you can cook is mise en place. So everything in its place, everything already pre-prepared and, uh, and everything ready to go. Put this in. Alrighty. Bit of salt and pepper. Salt, pepper, and we're going to mix that together with a wooden spoon and let everything just sweat down and then I can chat to you guys about anything you like. And if you are cooking along, like I always say, don't worry if um, I'm going a little bit too fast or I've chopped the ingredients faster than you're able to. This dish is super forgiving, so plenty of opportunity for you to catch up. And I'm just going to be stirring this around. This is barely cooking. I like, like, like most of the 3 one recipes, it's barely cooking. It's, you know, everything in the pan, sweat it down, add some spices. And then today you've got a stew, a casserole, a curry, a tray bake, whatever it is you're cooking. Super, super easy. Um, great. I've got someone from Canada. Hello, Fred from Ontario, Canada. That's brilliant. Glad you could make it. What fish would you use, if any, in this dish? I'd love to know. If you've got any um, fish that you would uh, that you guys have in a top, I've never been to Canada. I'd love to go to Canada. Okay, so bay leaf. We've got our garlic here. That I'm just going to peel. Should have probably peeled it before doing this live. No one really wants to watch me peel garlic. There's three cloves, so even more peeling. Um, a trick to peeling is just to, with the the body of the garlic, just twist it in its in its skin and then the skin just kind of naturally comes off rather than getting a knife and then trying to peel it like that. I just move it across. You might snap the garlic, but that's fine. And then the garlic skin just comes off quite easily. Now, in the recipe um, that I've got in the book and the one that I posted online, it says to grate the garlic, but you don't need to grate the garlic. You can, I'm just going to chop it with the flat of the knife, finely chop it that way, less equipment to wash afterwards. I'm always thinking about the process after um, or during cooking, like how to minimize the washing up afterwards. So I've got Indiana in the house, Sandra, nice. Competing with uh, Canada there for the, uh, the furthest watcherer. Uh, <laughs> oh, Alexandra, oh, Ali's cooking with me. Hey, Ali. <laughs> that's great. I hope the kids are gonna like this recipe. Um, so that's all the way from Parsons Green. And uh, Fred's wife is watching and learning. I'm, gl I'm glad you guys are watching and learning. That's great. Great, great to hear. Okay, so uh, I've just got the skins on one side and then the tomatoes here. Uh, we're just going to chop the tomatoes very roughly. You can use whatever tomatoes you want. 
baby tomatoes, uh, even chopped tomatoes, you've only got tinned tomatoes instead of fresh, that would also work. In fact, if you're using tinned tomatoes, uh, I would just use half a tin, because otherwise it would be a bit too salty, um, and uh, a bit too watery, but yeah, any, any sort of tomatoes would, would be fine. And with, um, uh, with the rest of the ingredients, you can use different ones as well. So if you had, instead of, um, somebody asked me about fennel, if you could use something else, you could use something like courgette, uh, you could use another seasonal ingredient. Um, you could even finely chop uh, parsnips and put those in as well. Um, it's, it's pretty versatile, this dish. But the, the autumnal flavours and the autumnal um, ingredients that we've got going here really work well. You should, if you're cooking along, uh, Ali and, and whoever else, uh, you should be getting a little bit of um, uh, caramelisation on the bottom of the pan by now. Just move it around so you don't, so it doesn't catch on the bottom of the pan. And I'm using a, uh, I always get asked, I'm using an, uh, an enamel, a ceramic um, non-stick pan. So Le Creuset, but then we do the same thing, you can get cheaper versions as well online from various uh, places. So, so yeah. I've got, oh, Paddy's watching, <laughs> says it looks tasty, that's great. Uh, Denise, yeah, I'm feeling much better, better enough to cook, which is great, always good. Uh, with the uh, garlic, what I'm going to do is just, with the flat of the knife, push it down. I'm using a pair now, keep using a pair With the chef's knife, just push it down so it mushes against, and then again using the claw technique, just finely chop, and that way you won't catch your fingers at all. Same thing with this. And then, uh, otherwise, if you wanted to grate it, you could easily grate it, that's totally fine as well. All right, we're gonna throw in the garlic, because we want that to cook slightly, just to take the raw, the rawness out of it. In it goes. A little bit more black pepper as well, I feel like it needs it. And we're gonna go in with the rest of our spices, so, Red chili flakes, I like it hot. I do like it a little bit of spice. Oh, someone from Louisiana, brilliant. You could use crawfish, that would be wonderful. Crawfish, I wish we could get crawfish over here. Um, crawfish would be a really good, a really good addition. I've actually been to Louisiana a couple of times and I, I love the crawfish sort of marinades that you guys have. Uh, I visited Tulane Medical School, which is, um, uh, a medical school that has been a huge inspiration for colouring medicine over here in the UK. Sweet paprika goes in, or smoked, whatever paprika you've got. And uh, yeah, no, they, were, they were absolutely fantastic. And the food, obviously, the Creole food, the Louisiana food, the, the, in, the inspiration from different areas has sort of been, it's kind of similar to this kind of dish, even though this is a bouillon base, you could do uh, a, a number of different flavours, like uh, Cajun flavours with this, would work very, very well. The other thing I'm adding, and you should be getting the smokiness of the paprika here as well, the other thing I'm adding is fresh thyme, but you could use dried thyme, and actually using dried herbs, particularly if they're good quality, they actually concentrate on the nutrition in the dried varieties. I'm just going to hold the stems here and just scrape the leaves off, you can put the stalks in, but they do get a little bit annoying uh, in, the, in, your, in your food. But you could, um, again, another sort of culinary technique is just to wrap it in some food grade string and then pop it in and take it out afterwards because we're gonna be adding a lot of sauce to this. So in that goes. I'm just being lazy. I don't really like to, uh, to add everything else. Bay leaf goes in. Stock cube's gonna go in, in a second. I'm just gonna scoop up our tomatoes. And actually, tomatoes that are a little bit soft work quite well in this recipe. So if they're turning, and they're not as firm and as ripe as they should be, it actually works quite well in this recipe. And like I said, use vine tomatoes, heritage tomatoes, whatever tomatoes you got, will work absolutely fine. All right, so move this around. We're gonna crumble in our stock cube. I'm so glad we've got someone from Louisiana. And that or North Wales as well. It's a bit soggy, sorry about that. <laughs> Wales, not the recipe, Wales. It's a bit wet here in London as well. Okay, crumble in your stock cube. Just a veggie stock cube or a fish stock cube. Uh, if you've got stock that you've made at the weekend, even better. 
And I'm also using a dried bay leaf because I don't have fresh, but if you've got fresh, the, the flavour is a lot better. And um, we're going to go in with our 500 mils of water or thereabouts. And this is going to blip away for about 10 minutes or so, just to allow the flavours to infuse, get everything going together. We want those tomatoes to, uh, to degrade down a bit as well. And that actually releases a lot of the nutrition within the tomatoes. So you might be losing the vitamin C because we're not using them raw, but you are actually um, destroying some of those cells that actually releases some of the novel antioxidants that you find in tomatoes. So the longer you can cook tomatoes, the more lycopene you can actually um, extract from it. So there are benefits in different ways of preparing vegetables. Um, so it's not like one way is better than the other. And normally what I would do in this instance is clear down the kitchen. I'm going to go with some more pepper. Clear down the kitchen because that, that's exactly why 3 to one recipes are formulated that way, such that you minimise the actual cooking time and maximise the time which you have to spend with your friends, family, loved ones, uh, instead of just slaving away over a stove. With the uh, parsley stalks, I'm going to put those in as well and then leave some of the leaves afterwards as well. So those goes in. And move those around. Oh, and uh, I, I'm still recording podcasts at the moment. Um, the one that came up today is with Dr. Tara Swart, who is a psychiatrist and a neuroscientist that actually examines um, manifestation of your sort of, um, your conscious and subconscious. It was a really interesting talk. It's kind of like The Secret, which is a book that was super popular about 15 years ago. It gives a sort of science about, uh, uh, science perspective on, um, on the theory behind the law of attraction, which, um, which I absolutely love. So, yeah. Let's see. Joanne, will your book be available in uh, Amazon, the US, in print? So, I, I, I'll be honest, I don't know at the moment. I know it's going to be available in Australia, New Zealand, uh, parts of Europe, India, South Africa. But US, I, I know it's available in Canada as well. So, uh, guys in Ontario, you can, um, you can check it out. Um, but no, I'm not too sure about the USA. Uh, I, I would love for it to be available in the USA, but I think it's going to take a little while until that happens. But some people have actually shipped it over from the UK um, via amazon.co.uk, so you can do that, but it's a bit expensive. Um, so yeah, you have to just look at these for, for now. Uh, let's see, blood watch. <laughs> Louisa of uh, South Wales, love the recipes, thank you so much. Um, read that you said your brown rice uh, a little too hard, make it open better, sift it, wash your rice, double the amount of water stock. Okay, brilliant, thanks, that's brilliant. Uh, what else? I'm loving the, the crawfish uh, comments, so it's great. You, you live in the US and you ordered the book uh, from the book depository right in eight days. That's great. Thank you so much. That's brilliant. I really hope that, um, well, you can ship it from Canada as well. That's another option. You can ship it from Canada and that way you can enjoy it that way. Okay, so uh, I'm going to serve this with some lemon wedges. I'm going to pop this on the side ready for an Instagram picture a bit later. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to put these away. So yeah, so if you're interested in the podcast, you can find it on Apple, Spotify, wherever podcasts are found, you'll find it there. And we've talked about a whole bunch of different topics on this series, looking at the brain and the health of the brain, how to obviously transform your life using the law of attraction and the science behind why that actually happens from a neuroscientific perspective but also food and mood, which is a very topical subject right now. Uh, we look at the topic of nutritional psychiatry, which again is uh, a burgeoning field, and so it should be because it's super important and something that we've forgotten about within psychiatry. Um, and we, we talked about ADHD uh, last week, so eating for, through the perspective of ADHD, what the evidence says about the inclusion of high quality fats, particularly the omega-3s, uh, oily um, fish, uh, at like uh, anchovies and mackerel, as well as nuts and seeds and potentially supplementation if you can't get it from your diet alone. Um, Amanda asked if you could use tofu instead of prawns. You could. Uh, I don't think it would have the same sort of authentic flavour 
if you use tofu, um, the marinated tofu is usually with soy, so it would be quite salty. I think a good inclusion if you wanted to make this completely plant-based would be uh, haricot beans, white beans, um, even chickpeas as well actually. Um, so particularly the ones that you, the garbanzo beans, the ones that you find are the big jars um, that have got a little bit of salt in them, they actually taste better. Uh, even though I prefer people to go for the ones in water, they do taste better when they've got the salted ones. And they're the giant chickpeas, those would work really well on this brew base. So right now you should be, I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of um, coming down quite nicely, it's just simmering away. This is the point where, if you wanted to intensify the flavour, if you had time, and you wanted to intensify this flavour even more so, then let it cook uh, like this with the lid on for an extra 10 minutes, an extra 15 minutes, and you'll get a lot more flavour out of the herbs and spices. But if you're in a rush, you know, it's Wednesday, midweek, you can barely cook as it is, then you can do it this way, which halves the cooking time. Um, uh, someone asking, oh, some, uh, Sunny was cooking along as well, thank you so much. Uh, are you asking about the almond butter for the recipe tomorrow? Oh, what's the recipe tomorrow? The ITEL vegetables. Um, you can, you can use another nut butter or tahini, uh, otherwise you can use coconut cream, I believe, for, just from the spices. But I'm, my head's not in the recipe tomorrow, my head's right here. Okay, so we've got um, some raw uh, shelled prawns that I've got here. You could use the ones with the tails on still. Uh, but yeah, this is just um, a convenience option because it's already been chopped and tailed. Whenever you're dealing with raw fish or raw ingredients, make sure you, um, you wash your hands and make sure you've got clean service. It should be simmering away and, and you want to cover the prawns, just dip them underneath the simmering water so that they all get contact with heat and then they cook through. It should only take about three minutes or so on a, on a medium heat whilst it's simmering. Wash my hands real quick. But yeah, there are loads of different options to make um, most of the recipes in the book. And any recipe that I put on the website are actually plant-based, so tons of tons of different um, varieties. Uh, Mary says, loving the cook-alongs, making you rethink your meat and two veg lifestyle. You know, I mean, I still eat meat and animal products, but the vast majority of what I eat is plant-based. Um, so it's just uh, a way of life that becomes very easy to do if you think about meat and fish as a luxury item. So, you know, this will be the only time that I'm eating fish this week. Um, I might have some anchovies at the weekend, um, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, oh, Tara's asking about tempeh. Um, tempeh, ooh, I'm not too sure. I don't, I've never tried it. I think tempeh lends itself to more sort of punchy Asian flavours, so soy and a bit of honey, a bit of brown sugar or coconut sugar and chili. That, that's what I think about when I think of tempeh. Although I have done recipes with um, pomegranate molasses and za'atar, which uh, is kind of like more Middle Eastern. With this kind of dish, I think it needs, it's the, the protein element in the form of white beans or the, or the prawns are gonna be quite subtle. So, and tempeh needs quite a lot of flavor to make it palatable in my opinion, so I think it, I think that's probably not one that I would try. But you know, if you are going to try it, let me know, I'd love to know. Um, Manda, no problem, any time. Uh, great, alright, so I'm going to check on these. These still need another couple of minutes. You can tell because the prawns haven't all turned pink yet. I'm just going to flip the ones that are still needing a little bit of time. But the flavour is beautiful, I can smell it already, the paprika is coming out. I'm going to clear down because I'm a bit of a, I'm, I'm very anal when it comes to uh, cleaning down my, my kitchen. i move this out of the way. I've got some lemon wedges. And, oh, I might as well chop up my parsley leaves as well at the same time. But do make this, even at the weekends, and become confident in the structure of the recipe. And you can make this really your own with lots of different herbs and spices. So if you wanted to use fennel seeds in the base, if you wanted to uh, use oregano instead of thyme, that's, that's you know, very easily done, basil, those sort of um, typical easily accessible culinary herbs, they would all work very nicely in this dish. Um, so you're not stuck to this sort of you know, combo, it, it can be you know, through, through a whole bunch of different things. Uh, Joanne says, made the green gumbo with spring greens from the garden. That is one of my favorite recipes, the green gumbo. It's in the book. 
but I cooked it earlier this week. So if you wanted to see that, you can definitely check it out on my YouTube channel or Facebook. Um, it's, yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite recipes. In fact, anything using that sort of gumbo formula um, is, is, I absolutely love, because uh, there's flavors of, of Louisiana. We've got someone from Louisiana uh, here. Just reminds me of my, um, my visit there, and it's, it's awesome. All right, so the uh, prawns are nicely cooked. You can tell because they're all gone pink. You don't want to overcook them because they'll become rubbery. So as soon as they all turn pink, I'll take it off the heat. I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to squeeze one of the lime wedges across. Throw the parsley on top as well. Over here. Serve it with a few lime wedges on the side. And then we're also going to put a drizzle of good quality extra virgin olive oil over and there you have it. That is your prawn bouillabaisse in literally, how long has it been? 23 minutes. You have a, a pan of delicious goodness with three portions of vegetables in it. You've got your onion, fennel, leek, tomatoes. Um, you have delicious prawns and if you're using beans then you actually have close to five portions of vegetables in this dish alone. It is a really hearty dish. I wouldn't really serve it with anything else because this serves two people. Remember, always double the ingredients if you're cooking for four, and you probably have a few leftovers as well using this dish in particular. Uh, but if there was anything else that I would add to this, it would be a nice piece of uh, sourdough, just one piece toasted with a little bit of garlic brushed over it, and that's all I would serve it with. But this on its own tastes smashing, and I'm really looking forward to getting into it. Uh, great, thank you Tara. Um, and thanks Joanne, thanks for everyone for, for watching. It's been a pleasure as it always is to cook for you guys live, 6 p.m. every day. I'm gonna be here cooking you three, two, one recipes, three portions of fruit, vegetables, nuts or seeds, two servings per recipe, all using one pan. Um, you can get the book or if you just wanna learn the formula, spread that formula around. And uh, if you sign up to the newsletter, you'll get the recipes in advance of me cooking them so you know what vegetables you want to cook, uh, what recipes you want to cook during the week, and um, just enjoy them afterwards as well for, um, for your viewing pleasure on YouTube or whatever. Anytime, thanks Angela, thanks uh, Chrissy. Uh, oh, Tracy's gonna be cooking the mushroom shawarma after this live, thanks for it. That's one of my favorite recipes from the book. Um, so do go check that out. And um, yeah, I will see you here tomorrow. We're gonna to be doing Ital vegetables. It's something I've done before. It's uh, sort of a Caribbean style uh, way of cooking them. We're gonna use punchy flavors, cumin, chili, and we're gonna be making the almond butter sauce, which is absolutely smashing. Uh, and there are lots of different alternatives. And for someone who's asking earlier about the alternatives to almond butter, I will think of some in advance so we can talk about that tomorrow. But thank you very much for watching and uh, have a safe evening and I'll see you here next time. Bye guys.